We now want to turn our attention to using dimensional analysis to calculate dosage. When we talk about dosage, we really are just thinking about how much medication someone needs to be given. That's it. And with dimensional analysis, we are going to be thinking a little bit differently than how we have previously. So dosage calculations are a little bit different than some of the conversions that we've seen. And it's different than last week per se, because if you recall last week, we may have been going from liters to milliliters, or maybe from grams to micrograms, or we went from seconds to hours. And as we saw in a previous video in this module, we're staying within the same dimension, right? So this is volume, this is mass, and this is time. And with dimensional analysis, it was very easy to go between these units because we were staying within the same dimension and the conversions that we needed are standard conversions. Another one real quick, maybe we needed to go from inches into feet. And here, this is a dimension of length. So that is a conversion we know, 12 inches and one foot, so we can convert between those. What makes this week a little bit different, and with dosage calculations in particular, is that a patient, a client, yourself, whatever you're considering here, we're usually told the amount of medication a patient needs in mass. So a physician might prescribe someone receive 50 milligrams of the drug, or they might prescribe you get five grams, or maybe you need to get 350 micrograms. These are all measures here of mass. So this is the amount of the medication that you need, but what you're physically going to be taking, so this is what's what we call ordered, that's what you need to receive, but what you're physically going to be taking is not going to, you're not gonna walk over and eat one milligram at a time. You might be taking tablets, or you might be taking capsules. Those are very different than just mass. Or you might need to measure out a number of milliliters or tablespoons or teaspoons. Or you might need to convert this into liters. There are a lot of things that you might need to measure out the medication to give. And so what we need in dosage calculations, we need to think about the dimensions and we need conversion factors that link these. Conversion factors linking dimensions. I'll put that in quotes here, linking. And we saw that previously when we were going from dollars to pounds, or we were going from length of a distance of miles per hour. That was something we could use to convert between miles and time. Or excuse me, yeah, miles, length, and time. So we need to think about what's ordered, what do I physically need to take, and then Think through the dimensional analysis, think through the conversion factors that you're given. And this has to be given to you. You have to be given the linking factor. And usually that's given to us as the available medication. So a lot of, a lot of things going on there. But what is similar, so how are dosage calculations similar? Well, we're still going to make a plan. We'll make a plan. We will write out our conversion factors. And we will still focus, uh, we will focus on canceling units. Canceling units. So that's how it's similar. Let's look at an example of a dosage calculation. We want to first calculate oral dosage. This is by mouth. So you would be taking this through your mouth or a patient would take this by mouth and you might see PO in an order we're going to see that in a moment that means by mouth or orally and you might also see oral sus as an abbreviation for an oral suspension which is a liquid so all of these just mean the medication needs to be given to the patient by mouth so what we want to do and think through is in these calculations, the first thing we want to think about, what are we given and what are we physically going to administer? So what are we given? 
And we also have to think about what form, and I'm going to put this in quotes here, form will the medication be given? So are we giving mat, are we giving tablets or capsule, are we giving liquid? And then the second thing we need to do once we have that is to make a plan. Make a plan and write out your conversion factors. And this includes thinking about the linking conversion factor and what's going to be really important here is what I'm going to refer to as the medication strength or the concentration of the medication, the available medication. That's really, really important here. And sometimes that's given to us on a label. Sometimes it's just given to us in a sentence. But we have to think about what is the available medication strength. And then finally, once we make a plan and write out our conversion factors, we will go ahead and complete the dimensional analysis. And we know that just means focusing on units, focus on canceling units. Okay, so here I have some pictures. And this is, again, every dosage calculation down to the foundation. And that is we are given, uh, and what the patient needs to receive is some amount of the drug. So here we have this drug. It's all broken into this powder. That's what they need to receive. They might need to be given a certain amount of grams, five grams, four grams, who knows, depending on what the condition is, what the drug is. But here's this drug, and we're not going to just walk over and just give all of that to the patient. We're going to find this drug at different strengths, either in a capsule or th that drug mixed with color and other things might be mixed in a tablet or this drug, this powder, might be broken down and diluted in this liquid here. So we have to stop and think about what are we physically going to be giving the patient and what unit is that. So is it a capsule? Is it a tablet? Is it MLs? Is it tablespoons, teaspoons? Have to stop and think about that. So here is our first example. We have a Patient, Forrest Kitten, diagnosis of a fever. We're given lots of information, the date, the time. This is what's called an order. It's usually given to us with what the medication is, how much of the medication needs to be given. PO, I already stated that that means by mouth. Q4H means every four hours. So we would have to repeat this every four hours. And PRN is as needed for pain. So a lot of abbreviations here. Not 100% needed in the context of this problem. We just want to focus on the dosage calculation. So what I need to do here, I need to make sure if I am the individual preparing this, that the patient gets 650 milligrams. So 650 milligrams is what I need to make sure the patient receives. I'm giving halfprin or aspirin. Here is the label for the drug. Have to think about what's the strength of this drug and what's it what's in this container. So I'm reading 325 milligrams and these are tablets. So that means this I'm going to be giving tablets. I need to somehow convert 650 milligrams into tablets. Again, that's the nature or the form of this medication. So I need to go from milligrams to tablets, knowing that one tablet, and that's the strength here, one tablet has a strength of 325 milligrams. So I'm going from a measure of mass, milligrams, to a measure of tablets. And that's exactly what I need to do. I need to go from milligrams to tablets. Now you might be looking at this and saying, I can do this in my head, I don't have to do dimensional analysis, and that's great. Go ahead and if you want to do that, that's fine. Check your work. But we're focusing on the dimensional analysis because dimensional analysis is what's going to be more applicable when we get to more complicated examples. So I'm going to start with what I want to change. I'm going to start with what I want to convert, milligrams. 
and I want to turn those milligrams into tablets. I know one tablet is 325 milligrams. I have to use the available medication. And when I do that, 300, or excuse me, 650 divided by 325, I get two tablets. Again, I am aware it's likely many of you could do this without having to set up that dimensional analysis. But again, let's set up the dimensional analysis, remind ourselves how this process works. Start with what we want to change, convert it into what we're looking to administer, what we physically need to give. In the next example, we have a decadron, or something that I'm not going to be able to pronounce, but we need to make sure the patient gets 7.5 milligrams IV, so this is going to be in their vein as an injection, intravenous, at 8 o'clock, 0800. Now, we're told what's available, the strength of what's available. The drug is available to us, 100 milligrams in 10 mLs. Every 10 mLs contains 100 milligrams. What we need to know is how many ml we need to prepare for this injection. If you want to pause the video and try this, please do. I need to make sure this patient is getting 7.5 milligrams. And when I'm done with my calculation, I'm physically going to be giving them into their vein a measure of milliliters. So let's think about the relationship between milligrams and milliliters. Do we have the conversion factor from milligrams to milliliters? We do. It is the strength of the medication. I know the relationship between these 100 milligrams 10 ml. That's the conversion factor. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn these 7.5 milligrams into milliliters. Milligrams to milliliters. Again, different than what we saw last week because we are going from a measure of mass to a measure of liquid. Mass, milligrams to liquid, milliliters. The only place we're going to be able to do that. The only way we're going to be able to convert that is if we have the factor linking them, which is the available drug. So I cancel out milligrams and what we should get here. When we multiply 7.5 times 10 divided by 100, you get 0 0.75 mLs. I would need to make sure I would fill this syringe. I would have to grab a syringe and fill it to 0 0.75 mLs. Now the next example is a little bit more complicated, and this is what we call a weight-based dose. This is a weight-based dose, and the reason it's a weight-based dose is because the amount of medication the patient needs depends on how much they weigh. Up top here, we were just told the patient needs 7.5 milligrams. Great. Now here, the amount of milligrams or micrograms or whatever that they need to be given in mass depends on how much they weigh. So a newborn baby is going to get much less of the amount of micrograms or milligrams than I would. I am much larger. It's based on the weight. So we're working with a patient who weighs 55 kilograms, and they need to receive a dose of uh, digoxin. What we know is that they need to make sure, we need to make sure as a provider, that they get 12 micrograms per kilogram. So this is kind of the conversion factor between micrograms of drug, of the drug, and the weight. So they need to get 12 micrograms for every kilogram that they weigh. We also have the available drug. 0 0.25 milligrams in each mLs. We need to figure out how many mLs to give. So ultimately what's happening here is the patient weighs a certain number of kilograms and by the end of my calculation I need to figure out how many mLs I'm going to give them. A lot of stuff going on here. So let's stop to think about how do I get into mLs. This is a measure of liquid. I have to use the available strength, so I have to get 0 0.25 milligram per ml in here. I also see 
the amount of drug is depending on the weight. So based on their weight, I could figure out how many micrograms they need. Again, based on this conversion here. I know 12 micrograms per kilogram. I also know, if I were to just do that step, I now need to figure out if they're getting the number of micrograms, I need to figure out how many mLs they need to be given. So I could go micrograms to milligrams, and then once I do, I can convert those milligrams into mLs using the strength. A lot of stuff going on there. But now what I'm going to do underneath each one is to write the conversion factor that I need. The patient weighs 55 kilograms. I know that. To go from kilograms to micrograms, I know they need to get 12 micrograms per, I'm going to write this as an equivalency, equal to one kilogram. So every kilogram, they need to get 12 micrograms. I know there are 1,000 micrograms in one milligram. And now I know there are 0 0.25 milligrams contained in one ml of fluid. So thinking through, I need to make sure that they get the medication. I'm physically going to be administering mLs. Now let's go ahead and do this dimensional analysis. 55 kilograms. I know each kilogram, I need to make sure the patient gets 12 micrograms. If I were to stop right now, I would have the total number of micrograms this patient needs. But I'm not done. I need to now turn those micrograms into milligrams. And the reason I want to do that is because I can then use the available strength. So I divide. In this case, I'm going to, oh, I'm going to multiply by 1 over 1,000. And now I want to turn those milligrams into a measure of liquid milliliters. I know 1 ml contains 0 0.25 milligrams. And if I do that, I will finally arrive at milliliters. So I'm going to multiply all of the numerators. So 55 times 12, we get 660 in the numerator. 660. And in the denominator, I'm going to get 250. 1,000 times 0.25. And so now when I put that in my calculator, I get 2.64. And the unit is milliliters. A lot of stuff's going on there. We need to think about the patient's weight, and this is a weight-based dose. They need to get 12 micrograms for every kilogram, so we'll use their weight. We'll turn that into micrograms to how much drug they need. Then we're going to use the available medication. But in this problem, the available medication was in milligrams, and the amount they needed was in micrograms, so there was a little bit of a step there. One more problem that's a little bit similar to this using body surface area. The final example, a patient with a body surface area of 2.4 meters squared, and this should be meters squared, is ordered to receive 20 units per meter squared. So that should be meters squared. The drug is available at a strength of 100 units per 4 ml, Interpret this information, and then we need to think about how much milliliters, how many milliliters the patient needs. Lots of different things in this problem. Let's start with body surface area. Body surface area is just a fancy way of thinking about how much skin someone has. So when you think about a body, if you were to take that person's skin and stretch it into a square, I know that's a little bit weird to think about, but then... That's what's happening here. If you take that person's skin and you were to stretch it into a square, the area here, let's suppose this is two meters by two meters. Actually, let's do one. One meter by one meter. This would be one meter squared, one by one. So you're finding, in this case, we're told the person's body surface area, the amount of skin they have is 2.5. 2.5 meters squared. 
So if you were to stretch this out, they would have, that would be the size in, in terms of area of the square. They need to get, and this is called dosage by BSA, so dosage by body surface area. They need to get 20 units of medication, a little bit different to see it that way. Units is kind of like a fancy milligram. That's how I think about it. It's a measure of a chemical composition, but 20 units for every meter squared, per meter squared. So if our patient here had a body surface area of one meter squared, if they had a body surface area of one meter squared, then they would get 20 units. That's what this is saying. But our client, our patient, does not have a body surface area of one meter squared. They have 2.25. So what we have to do is to think about for our patient, using their body surface area, I need to first turn that into a number of units, and then I know at the end I need to figure out how many ml they need to get. So I need to use the available medication to turn that into ml. And again, I'm going to write out my conversion factors. I know this person needs 20 units. That's going to be equivalent to 1 meter squared. Write it in a form of equivalency here. And the strength of the medication, there are 100 units in every 4 mLs. So using their body surface area of 2.25 meters squared, I can think about how many units they need by multiplying. We know 1 meter squared is going to give us 20 units. So if I were to stop right now, I would know the total number of units this person needs. But I'm not done because I want to turn those units into mLs. So the units will cancel. I know there are 100 units in every 4 mLs. I'm ready now to go ahead and multiply 2.25 times 20 times 4. We get 180. And we're going to divide that by 1 times 1 times 100, which is 100. We get 1.8, and the unit is mLs. This patient needs to get 1.8 mLs of medication. And if they get that, then they will be getting the perfect amount of units that they need. Now, real quick, I want to stop. Maybe, maybe I'll just do this calculation first. If I just did the 2.25 times 20, what we get is 45. And that is the total number of units the patient needs. They need to get 45 units. And this makes sense. There are 100 units in 4 mLs. So this available medication, there are 100 units floating around in 4 mLs. They only need 45 units. So even before I do the calculation, and, and, and retrospect now when I think back to the calculation, I immediately should know they need less than 4 mLs of this medication. If they got 4 mLs of this medication, think about giving this, we have a bigger syringe here. Think about filling this syringe to 4 mLs and giving 4 mLs of this medication. If you were to give 4 mLs, given the strength here, then they would have received 100 units but we don't want to give them 100 units. They only needed 45. So I know the amount of mLs needs to be much less, almost half, pretty close to half. This is a good opportunity at the end of the calculation, in the middle of the calculation, to stop and reflect on whether or not your calculation makes sense. That's going to be really important with dosage calculations.